Ever since I first started watching Sayonara Setsupa Sensei way back in like 2010, I immediately fell in love with the series and quickly binged through the entire thing. I mean, the whole opening sequence is this idea of this guy that sees nothing but despair in everything. And he's given up on everything. And as he's at the end of his rope, unfortunately, literally, he's confronted by a girl that literally sees the positive in everything. And she immediately grabs onto him, yanks him as he's hanging, and... I could never forget the response that he gives to this girl. His response isn't like that you almost helped me finish it. No. <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, it was immediately at that opening sequence that I fell in love with the show and I immediately watched through the entire thing. It was such a great series. And what followed that whole sequence is just more characters to add to the mix and all these goofy situations, mostly kind of centered around one subject each skit, but typically always kind of evolving the formula in a way that always had me laughing out loud. And yes, an interesting style given to it that I think is kind of carried over into everything that Shaft does anymore. Sayonara Setsupa Sensei is one of those shows that I think is more influential than most people believe, but unfortunately, I don't see enough people talking about it. And I think that for a long time there, it was because this show was never given a shot. Now, I don't claim to have any power or sway in the world of anime, but I will point out the fact that shortly after calling out to all the companies, somebody pick up this show, a few months later, Nozomi Entertainment came out and said, we got it. We got the whole series and we're going to release it. And I was absolutely thrilled. And now I have it in my hands. <laughs> now, unfortunately, it took quite a long time for the series to come out. And there's a reason why, <laughs> but we'll get into more of that later on. But this is my review of Sayonara Zetsuba Sensei, the first season that has been released by Nozomi Entertainment and Write Stuff. They gave me a copy of this so that I can review it for you guys. And I was more than happy to. <laughs> So let's jump right into it. Roll that beautiful opening. Sayonara Setsupa Sensei opens up with a teacher who, as I kind of mentioned earlier, kind of sees the despair and the negativity in everything around him. This is a guy that's pretty much given up on everything because everything that he sees is going terribly. But this teacher, who they later nicknamed Setsupa Sensei because the way that his name is actually written, if you turn it a certain way, it actually means Setsupa, or despair, technically. Setsupa Sensei! But as he returns to his actual job of being a teacher, we get to see that we have a large cast of characters here that all have their different quirks. We have the girl that I mentioned earlier, Fuda, who is the one that kind of sees positive in everything that she sees. You have the Sundere foreign exchange student that claims that she'll sue you for anything that you do. You have the class president who pretty much wants order in everything. Everything has to be symmetrical and clean and perfect. You have the immigrant child that nobody can say no to because she's just too darn adorable and just everybody feels sorry for her. A Yandere girl, Hikimori, you have the Fujoshi, you have the girl that's normal. <laughs> just a wide variety of characters who all kind of present some sort of chemistry to each of the skits. And that's where we get into the kind of the bread and butter of what Sayonara Zetsupa Sensei is. A lot of this series really does revolve around kind of finding some sort of subject, something in the world itself or society that Zetsupa really wants to kind of find the negativity in and really criticize, while at the same time having the cast of characters themselves really question what they're really talking about. And again, why does he always go so far in the deep end? The concept here is really kind of picking apart these ideas and showing the absurd extremes of each one of them. And this works for me personally pretty much all the time. But at the same time, I can't acknowledge that for some people, if that humor doesn't hit because obviously comedy is subjective, it can lead to some of these skits kind of being a little bit bogged down and a little bit repetitive. Even for myself, there was probably about two or three skits throughout the entirety of this first season that were those cases where I was going, yeah, you're kind of killing the joke. The joke's not really there. It was funny the first two times you did it, but now that you're kind of stretching this out, you're losing me. For example, they have one sequence where they go to this festival. And the concept that they present here is the hype parade, where these people will put people on pedestals and they'll march around with them and they'll cheer how great this thing is. And so what they do is they have the sequence where something gets put on the pedestal and they hype it. <laughs> 
And it's always these really dumb things. They're really trying to blow out of proportion. Some random guy wrote a book, throw him on the hype thing. Suddenly the sales drive up. And like I said, it's funny the first couple times, but after like a while, and this being like half the episode, it really did start getting really annoying. But these were like outliers for me amongst all the other skits in the series that I absolutely loved. The criticism drill. <laughs> I think my funniest segment of this entire series is the criticism drill, where essentially they have this guy come in who's like a off-duty fireman, and he's supposed to go to each one of these children and criticize them so they're prepared for the real life where they could run into criticism. <laughs> And it just turns into the most absurd layout for it. And that really gets into my ideas of the presentation itself. I absolutely loved what Shaft did this series. And like I said earlier, and I kind of mentioned it, this is essentially where Shaft created the style that we would later see in the Monogatari series. These random shots, shots of empty classrooms, weird perspective shots, constant text flying up on the screen left and right, the film roll sequences, all these different styles that, again, you see pretty much is the Monogatari series, that was made here. This was the first case of them really establishing that style that would be popularized there. And it's something that takes these very basic skits of these back and forth between characters and really amps it up. And yes, if you get a lot of references and a lot of these snapshots, it's a lot more engaging. Which gets me into understanding why this series took so long. This took literally three years for them to finally release the show. And I was kind of thankful that Nozomi Entertainment at some point released a video saying, hey, this is why it's taking so long. Nozomi Entertainment didn't just do the basics. They didn't just simply copy and paste somebody else's translation. They didn't simply just translate the vocals. They translated everything and researched every single reference in the entire show, which is a lot. Back in the day, back in the, during the fan sub days when it was really big, you would have a lot of people that would take a lot of effort into translating these full screens of text. And it was a lot of effort. And yes, in some cases, they would even mention the references. Like, they would put in parentheses, this means this because this is this. They did that with this series. The work put in the series, Judy Albert is the one that's listed in here. Hats off to you. Thank you so much for giving this series the amount of respect that it deserves. This book is 329 pages of full context to every joke, every text that's on the screen. If you really want to deep dive in this series, this is full of information. And again, every single snapshot, every single second of this show is reference after reference, after text after text, and she's wrote it all in this book. And it's truly amazing the work they put into it. It kind of makes this entire release right here more than just a Blu-ray. This is a passion project, and I give them a massive amount of respect for that. Which again, is obviously the reason why it took them three years to put together this one translation, and it really does have me hopeful for the other two seasons, plus the OVAs that'll eventually, hopefully, still come out. Hopefully the buyout didn't ruin that. Please, I hope so not. Please don't ruin it. <laughs> But getting back to the show itself, I absolutely adore it. I think the chemistry of the characters is fantastic. Yes, each one of the characters kind of falls into some sort of trope, but the tropes themselves are kind of the essence of the comedy. And in a lot of cases, the tropes themselves are sort of the joke in itself. At face value, you see the Genki character, but then it kind of warps it in some way. You have the creation of a Yandere character and how absurdly annoying that is to exist. <laughs> The shutting character who gets sort of fixed, but this ends up turning into somebody that's sort of just clingy. Again, they're tropes, but they're tropes that have a twist to it and a logic behind them that's sort of absurd. But honestly, I think like the goal, the bread and butter of this series, I think is always surrounding Zetsuba Sensei and I think more focus in Fura, the one that sees positive and everything. I think their ability to kind of show the extremes of each side, taking these different cultural subjects and really picking them apart in like the most dumb way possible, but it's hilarious because it's so absurd, 
is really where I get a lot of my fun in the series. And having these brief moments of going to each one of these other characters, showing their different quirks, such as like the character who's believed to be abused, we end up finding out it's because she really likes pulling tails at the zoo. <laughs> and then having this whole sequence where they thought that she was being abused, so they're following the father around and just ruining his name to each of these shops and preventing him from buying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Again, some cases you're probably going to find those skits don't really work for you, but for me, besides maybe two skits, every single one of them had these great punchlines. It presents this really simple subject, but then kind of just takes it to the absurd limits. And as it progresses and evolves that joke, that's where a lot of this writer's cleverness really shines. I really love like the end of a lot of these episodes. Not really, I don't remember if they were all the episodes. They would have this goofy little spoof of a certain movie. They did one of Psycho, where that's supposed inside of a shower and all these different people come in and attack him. <laughs> They did something for Lupin. It was just a lot of fun. With all that said, yes, I highly recommend picking up Sino Nada as a Sensei. Again, just mainly for the fact of how this is literally a perfect release. There's just so much passion that was put into this whole release. The amount of effort that was put into this series is really awe-inspiring. You don't get this from most companies. And the fact that I believe this is one of the classic comedy series that I think everybody should check out. It's a series that I've been calling for people to check out ever since I first watched it. 12 years ago and I still absolutely love it. It still holds up to this day. And like I said, if you're a huge fan of the Monoktari series, you're going to find kind of a similar style here that you're going to truly love. With that said, I think Nozomi Entertainment and Right Stuff for sending me a review copy of this series to check out to let you guys know about it. I'll have a link down in the description so if you want to pick it up yourself. Additionally, I hope that you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what's all this series if you're going to be checking it out. Additionally, if you've not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all of my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I greatly appreciate everybody that does, and y'all take care.